हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू क्लासिक एजुकेशन यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम महेश पुंडीबीज ए फैकल्टी मेंबर फॉर यू पी एस सी एस्परेंट्स एलवेज एज वेल एज फॉर आई बी पी एस एस्परेंट्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर आई स्टार्ट द क्लास सो दिस इज नॉट बेसिक्स ऑफ मेंटल एबिलिटी इतना बेसिक्स ऑफ मेंटल एबिलिटी क्लास अल ओके सो नहीं बेर अटेबी इलेन एस बी ई नहीं थमल नोड़ी एस बी ई ओके प्रीवियस् इयर स्टेट बैंक आफ् इंडिया नान प्रीवियस् इयर क्वेश्चनसन सालवीन रि ओके सो बेसिक्स आफ् मेंटल एबिलिटी क्लास ऐन रही ना बर्त ओके फैट ना टुमारो लाइव एट नईन ओ क्लॉक फैट थैंक यू ना हियर इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर सेशन वी आर् गोयिंग टू डिस्क प्रीवियस् इयर क्वेश्चन आफ् एस बी ई ओके सो वन मोर् थिंग बिफोर ई वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट दिस सो एस एस सी सी जी एल ओके सो एस एस सी सी जी एल एक्साम ओके एस एस सी सी जी एल एक्साम अरउंड ट्वेंटी थौसंड वेकेन्सी आर् ऊट ओके सो आलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी थौसंड वेकेन्सी आर् ऊट ओके सो इफ यू आर् इंट्रेस्टेड ओके जस्ट अल्लाई फॉर् दीज एक्साम ओके सो जस्ट अल्लाई फॉर् दीज एक्साम ओके सो एंड हि हाज चेंज द पैटर्न आलो ओके सो दिस टाइम हि हाज चेंज द पैटर्न आलो सो वाट ई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू हियर एज ओके I think uh, compared to the previous pattern, now he has simplified it. Okay, the level of difficulty will be same. So he has just uh, excluded, he has just removed uh, some of the writing exams like essay writing, letter writing. Okay, so those type of exams are been eliminated. So he has, you can say in simple ways, he has just simplified the process. Okay, so uh, just prepare for this examination. it is a very good opportunity to you all okay so prepare for ssc examination ccl examination the notification is out so just apply for it right okay so if you want uh, you tell me in the comment box we will bring in detail uh, video okay uh, talking about ssc ccl what books to refer for the preparation okay and uh, what is the okay what are the uh, changes that are been made in the examination so suppose if you want a detailed video on this okay uh, along with the preparation strategy then you just tell me uh, tell us in the comment box so definitely we will make a video on this right fine now we will come to the main part of uh, today's class that is nothing but uh, a question okay on we are going to discuss the question on sbi ओके स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन ओके एज वी आल नो दैट द नोटिफिकेशन हेज बीन ऊट ओके एंड वी हैड प्रॉमिस यू दैट वी विल डिस्कस सम ऑफ द प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दीज टॉपिक्स राइट सो हियर आई हैव टेकन ए बेसिक क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ओके आई हैव टेकन अ बेसिक क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट एंड आफ्टर सॉलविंग दिस क्वेश्चन वी विल सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन ओके विच हेज बीन आस्ड इन एस बी ई पी ओ मेन्स टू थौसंड सिक्सटीन ओके सो वी विल डिस्कस सो देर आर फाइव सब क्वेश्चन विच हेज बीन आस्ड ओके सो वी विल डिस्कस आल दीज फाइव क्वेश्चन बट बिफोर सालविंग दिस क्वेश्चन डायरेक्टली ओके सो वी शुड नो द बेसिक्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर टॉपिक सो हियर फर्स्ट वी विल सॉल्व द बेसिक्स ऑफ दिस टॉपिक ओके वी विल गो थ्रू द बेसिक्स ऑफ दिस टॉपिक बेसिकली दिस पर्टिक्युलर टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स are asked based on the venn diagrams okay which are the part of percentage topic only so we will understand how to solve the problems based on venn diagram first so here also we have two types of problems okay so first type of a problem is where two parameters are given and another type of problem is where three parameters are given right so today we will discuss the problems which are based on two parameters and in tomorrow's class we will discuss the questions which come on the three parameters type of questions right so uh, two parameter basic question first and then we will discuss the question which has come in the examination and after that in tomorrow's class also same thing three parameters first basic and then the problem which has come in the exam right now see here now what he is basically trying to tell me here is okay so here he is telling me in a class 50% of the students have passed in maths okay so they have passed in maths subject 55% of the students they have passed in english and 15% on okay 15% of the students have passed in both the subject and 60 student it is not percentage okay 60 students have failed in both the subject so 60 students have failed in both the subject so now he is going to ask some question here here i have not taken the question 
but there can be plenty of questions that can be asked here okay so we will discuss them along with this method that i am telling you along with that we can parallelly discuss those questions right so first you see what he is telling me let us represent this let us say let us take this circle okay let us take this circle so this circle okay so this circle represents okay this circle represents okay one subject okay that is nothing but maths subject so this is nothing but maths subject so in simple words i want to tell you that this complete circle represents maths or you can say this is the circle which represents okay this is the circle which represents the number of students those who have passed in maths so it is 50% so 50% of the students have passed in maths right fine now let us take another circle here okay and this circle i will draw it in this way okay this circle i will draw it in this way where this circle represents okay the number of students those who have passed in english so english this complete circle represents the english okay and how many students have passed in english they have said that they are 55% of the students so english is nothing but 55% of the students now see here i will just uh, explain it once again this blue color circle represents listen to my statements properly okay this blue color circle represents the number of students those who have passed in maths matlab the percentage of the students those who have passed in maths and this red color circle represents the percentage of the students those who have passed in english right now from where to start this question now see he is telling me that 15% of the students passed in both the circle now see here 15% of the students those who have passed in both the circle now if i ask you if i ask you that this area which i am going to mark now with the black color if i ask you a question that this black color portion or belongs to which circle then you will say it belongs to both the circles yes or no so this 15% is nothing but it is this area okay so this black color area is nothing but it is 15% so this is 15% right now see here this complete circles value is 50% this complete circles value is 50% and already 15% of the space is occupied so if i ask you then this remaining portion okay this remaining portion which is of blue color here this remaining portion is how much percent if i ask you then what you will do you will subtract this 50% from this 15% i mean you will say 35% right and what is this 35% if i ask you what is this 35% it is nothing but it is the number of students those who have passed in only maths subject those who have passed in only maths subject now what is mean by uh, see i told you that 50% of the students have passed in maths when i said this 50% of the students passed in maths and now i am telling you that 35% of the students have passed only in maths what is the difference between these two statements the difference is 35% of the students those who have passed only in maths it means that they have passed in only math subject and they have failed in another subject that is they have failed in english subject now see here okay try to understand it in a basic see here here there are two subjects one is maths and another one is english now suppose if i ask you what are the possibilities that a student can have either he can pass in both the subject he will pass in math subject he will fail in english subject or he will fail in math subject he will pass in english subject or he will fail in both the subject these are the maximum possibilities that a student can have the result of the students can be in this format now see here when i say that the number of students those who have passed in maths is 50% it is nothing but this category now listen to me carefully okay it is this category when i say that 50% of the students have passed in maths if i say like that then it is this category that means in that 50% those students are been also included those who have passed in both the subject 
right so that means this complete percentage is nothing but it is 50 percent but here here whatever i told you that here i told you 30 for 35 percent of the students have passed only in maths it means it is only this condition try to understand it is only this condition that is nothing but this condition now here you can see here you can see that there is a student who has passed in maths but failed in english so this particular case is nothing but it is nothing but 35 percent so 35 percent of the student okay have passed have passed only 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 in maths only in maths now see why i am telling you why i am giving you so much stress here it is because in the examination he will not ask you that how many percent of the students have passed only in maths he will not ask you this question what he will ask is how many percent of the students failed only in english i repeat how many percent of the students failed only in english that means if you just look at this possibilities then you see it is the same percentage how many percent of the people have failed in english it is the same percent of the students those who passed only in maths are you understanding my point most of the students they remember this most of the students they understand this but they don't understand the parallel statement which will be asked in the exam so when i say that 35 percent of the students have passed only in maths it also indicates the same 35 percent of the students have failed have failed okay have failed only in english so try to understand this statement also so try to understand this statement also that is the same 35 percent of the students have failed only in english right let us move to the further part okay let us move to the further part now here he is telling me that this complete circle is 55 percent okay this complete circle is 55 percent and already 15 percent of the circle space is occupied so that means this remaining portion okay this remaining portion is how much it is nothing but 55 minus 15 that is nothing but 40 percent so what is this 40 percent it is the number of students those who passed only in english these are the number of students or the percentage of the students those who passed only in english that is nothing but here basically he is talking about this part okay he is basically talking about this part okay so if you look at this part properly then you see it is the students that is 40 percent of the students they have passed only in english correspondingly what is the other statement we need to understand the same 40 percent of the students have failed only in maths the same 40 percent of the students have failed only in maths right so you need to understand this right so here when I say 40 percent, so the same 40 percent of the students, the same 40 percent of the students, okay, of the students have failed, have failed only, only in maths. So, this is the statement that we need to understand. So, so failed only in maths. So, failed only. See, only means he is talking very specifically, right? He is talking only, he is talking specifically, right? So, I hope you have understood this diagram properly. Now, what I will do is, I will add these values, okay? I will add these values. That is, 35 plus 15 plus 40, right? So, 35, 50 and 40, it will become 90 percent. Now, what does this 90 percent represent? Now, if I add these three values, that is 35 percent plus 15 percent plus 40 percent, if I add these values, then what does it indicates it tells me that it is 90 percent so 90 percent value is what is mean by 90 percent let me ask you this question so 90 percent means it is the number of or it is the percentage of the students those who passed in at least one subject those who passed in at least one subject or in simple you can say right in simple you can say that the same 90 percent of the students are those who have passed 
okay who have passed in minimum one subject minimum one subject in minimum one subject right so 90% of the students have passed in minimum one subject minimum one subject or at least one subject okay so in this percentage those students will also come those who have passed in both the subjects see try to understand suppose if i keep two test here let us assume that this is the classroom and suppose if i uh, keep two test test 1 and test 2 after declaring the results what i will tell only those students will attend my class those who have passed in at least one subject when i give this statement right when i give this statement that only those students will attend my class those who have passed in at least one subject so when i say this now what does i am what i am telling here that means the students those who have passed in maths only maths they will attend yes they will definitely attend when i say those students those who have passed in english will attend my class definitely those will attend my class and when i say those students okay who are passed in both the subject even those students will attend my class only those students will not attend my class those who have failed in both the subjects right so in this 90% of the students have passed in minimum one subject means all those students are been also involved those who have passed in both the subject also only in english also and only in maths also so now when entire values are been considered as 100% so remaining 10% are what remaining 10% are those students those who have failed in both the subjects right so those who have failed in both the subjects so here he has told me that there are 60 students okay there are 60 students those who have failed in both the subject so there are 60 students those who have failed in both the subject so you can say that this 60 this 100 uh, sorry this 10% value is nothing but what it is 60 and if i calculate the 100% value so if i calculate the 100% value then you see it is a 10 times here so 10 times of this will be my answer so that is nothing but 600 600 is what 600 is the total strength total strength of the class right so how many students have attended the exam so if i ask you then you can say 600 students have attended the exam so this is the okay so this is the total strength of the class now what all questions can be asked okay so first you take the screenshot of this okay first you take the screenshot of this okay now uh, we will uh, discuss some of the questions here now what are the questions that can come in your exam so just i will remove this part now first question that we will get how many number of students have passed in at least one subject how many number of students have passed in at least one subject so when i asked you this question then what i am directly telling you that how many number of students have passed in at least one subject so you see 90% of the students have passed in at least one subject so what you can do you can find 600s 90% okay that is one way see here 600s 90% so 600s 90% so this two zeros and this two zeros will get cancel so how much it will become it will become 540 right so 540 or what is the another way we can do see 600 is the total strength and out of okay out of that we know that nine <coughs> out of this 60 students have failed in both the exams right so from that you can minus this 60 you will get 540 so both the ways you can do either you can calculate the 90% value or you can subtract the from the total strength the number of students those who have failed in both the subject so both both the ways you can do it so the number of students who passed in at least one subject or okay the number of students those who passed okay those who passed in minimum one subject minimum one subject or at least one subject both are same right so this was the first question right now let me discuss the second question so second question is b second question what is the second question my question is how many number of students have passed in only one subject okay so the number of students number of students passed in okay passed in only one subject only one subject only one subject 
okay how many number of students have passed in only one subject see try to understand the question he is clearly mentioning me okay if you understand the previous question so in the previous question what it was the number of students who passed in minimum one subject but here i am asking you the number of students who passed in only one subject andre one subject da pass adanta vidyarthigalu eshtu adare one subject da pass agirbekre avaru right only one subject so one subject da pass adavaru yar adare nodri illi this 35% right this 35% of the students and this 40% of the students so how much it will become so 40 plus 35 75 so what you have to do you have to find 675% so how much it will become it will become 15 and it will become 450 okay so it will become 450 so here it will become 150 so 450 so 450 students have okay they have passed in only one subject now question number 3 what he will ask you as the question number 3 question number 3 he will ask you how many number of students okay how many how many students failed okay how many students failed okay failed only in english how many number of students failed only in english how many number of students failed okay failed only in english so how many number of students failed only in english so yest jana english tag ashta fail agidar ant question kelidan so it is the same percentage of the students those who have passed only in maths so how many percent of the students have passed in maths it is 35% so what you need to do is 600 35% you have to find okay so this is how you need to understand a particular question now suppose if the question is asked how many number of students have failed okay have failed only in maths have failed only in maths that means it will be 40% so 600s 40% you have to calculate so this will be the answer so in this way okay we are going to solve the problems right but uh, this was a basic thing okay basic thing but in the exam especially sbi i usually uh, tell it in a funny way that usually sbi whenever the question paper he sets he always sets it in a difficult way okay his question paper is bit standard compared to other ibps examinations okay so his question paper is always a standard so usually i tell them in a funny way that he never ask you to eat the food in this way see always he will tell you to eat the food in this way right uh, so that is sbi right so Uh, this is the basic okay which we need to have the idea so what you do is you take the screenshot of this okay and then we will move to the question that was asked in the examination right fine so i hope you have uh, taken the screenshot of this okay now we will move to the next question so the question that has been asked in the examination right so the what what question has been asked in the examination so we will see it in detail we will talk about this in detail right so here there is a question that in a college 600 students okay in a college 600 students okay so in a college 600 students okay boys and girls are in the ratio 8 is to 7 so that means what he is trying to tell me that out of this 600 okay out of this 600 the boys is to girls ratio so that means see here so directly you have to do it see one thing you understand we are writing bank examination and our calculation should be very good right so basically when students come and ask me that how to get selected in banking examination i will tell you one thing okay one best thing i will tell you that here you need calculations your calculations should be very good okay so your calculations if your calculations are very good and if your concepts are good then definitely you will get selected okay so these two things are that which are going to matter a lot in the examination right so time management is there definitely time management is a point uh, a valid point for our discussion okay might be in the examination you need a good time management yes that is the point but time management is nothing but ultimately if you are managing the calculation part properly then you are managing the time itself so directly you can say it is directly proportional right so 
calculations are very important. Now, as this is the uh, first problem that we are discussing, so I will tell you in detail. Okay, I will tell you in detail each and everything, each and every part of the calculation. I will do it and I will show you. But in the examination, please don't do it in this way. So I am telling it before starting the question, right? So in the examination, always have a proper grip on your calculations, right? So what to do? Usually, most of the students they ask me how to improve our calculation. It is the simplest method of improving your calculation is practice, practice and practice, right? So you have to just practice a lot. That's it. Okay, fine. So yes, in the calculation there are some tricks and there. Okay, definitely it will be there. But that is what it comes by the practice only, right? Fine. Let us come to this question here, which is based on the Venn diagram on two parameters, right? Which is based on the Venn diagram of two parameters. In a college, out of 600 students, boys and girls are in the ratio 8 is to 7. That means, what he is telling me, that suppose if there are 600 students, in that, how many are boys? So, how many are boys if I want to calculate? So, see here, boys is to girls ratio is 8 is to 7. That means, 8 boys are there out of 15 because 8 plus 7 is 15. So, here it will become 15 4 is 60 and 0. So, 8 4 is 32. So, how many boys are there? 320 boys are there, right? So, if total is uh, 600, so how many girls will be there? 600 minus, okay, 320. That is nothing but a 280. So, this much calculations at least it should be perfect, okay? So, it's basic calculations on through Barbekar Namaga, right? Ekandra now, India the most top bank, bank the exam at least Easter uh, and okay uh, maths you must have okay basic calculations should be there okay so girls are how much here they are nothing but okay so 280 girls are there right so this part is clear now the first part first line of the uh, this thing is clear right now each student went to either physics lab or chemistry lab or both and the 600 students in other way, your physics lab is going to be chemistry lab is going to be like a lab sir attend money are okay so there is no student see what is the meaning of this statement try to understand this what is the meaning of this statement he is trying to tell me in this question is he is telling me that no students have left the labs are you understanding me? they have at least attended one lab he is trying to tell that at least they have attended one lab, right? Might might be some students have attended physics lab, might be some students have attended chemistry lab, okay? Might be both, uh, some students have attended both the lab, but they have attended the labs. This is the important thing which you need to understand. But in the previous problem, okay, when we saw, in this you see, 60 students have failed in both the subject. That means there are some students, those who have not passed in at least one subject. Right? There are some students, those who have failed in both the subjects. So, in that case, okay, in this particular problem, okay, so we do not have that, okay, that he is telling me that some students are there, those who have attended at least one subject, right. Then, we will come to the next part of this uh, question. He is telling me 40 percent of the boys attended only physics lab, right. Now, see here. Now, let us draw the diagram here, okay, let us place it here. Right. So, let us say that this is the, okay, physics lab, right. And uh, let us draw another diagram here, okay, in black and let us say this is nothing but what? This is nothing but let us change this because we need slightly, okay. Ha, now, it is good, right. So, okay. So, here, uh, slightly this uh, circle is big, it is okay, we will manage it here only, simply not to waste our time in uh, drawing the diagrams, okay. 40 percent of the boys attended only physics lab, let us say that this is physics lab, okay. Let us say that this is a physics lab, okay. This is physics lab, okay and this is chemistry lab and what is this part? Both, yes or no? So, it is both. Right. So, now what we will do is 40 percent of the boys attended only physics lab. So, 40 percent of what? This. Right. So, here I will do. So, physics lab 40 percent. So, 320 is 40 percent. Okay. 320 is 40 percent. 
okay so just this two zeros and this two zeros will get cancel okay so it will become 128 so here i will write boys okay boys and i will write 128 okay so this uh, diagram So boys 128. So I will write it in this way 128. Okay, this part is clear, right? Now then after that he is telling me, okay, total 20 children, 20 percent of the childrens went to both lab. 20 percent of the childrens they went to both lab. Okay, 20 percent. So 20 percent of 600 will become how much? Do you need to calculate it? It will become 120, right? So 120 students, total 120 students have went to the lab and then he is telling me out of which 25% are boys. So here boys are how much? 120 is 25%, right? So here it will become how much? It will become 30. So 30 boys, okay, 30 boys have went to what? They have went to, okay, they have went to both the labs. Then. 45% of the girls went to only chemistry lab, okay. So, he is clearly telling me, okay, if you read the question properly, then you see, then 40% of the boys only, only he is clearly mentioning it here. And here also he is clearly mentioning me that it is only chemistry. So, chemistry lab. So, this is chemistry lab and here I will place girls, okay. So, girls are how much? They are 45%, 45% of the girls. So, girls are how much? 280. So, 280 into 45 percent, 45 divided by 100. So, this one 0 and this one 0 will get cancelled. So, 5 9s and 5 2s. So, 2 1s are 2 14s are 14 9s are 126. So, how many girls have went only to the chemistry lab? 126, right. So, this is the question, okay. Now, here we have the first question. So, what is this first question? Total, how many boys went to the physics lab? Okay, how many boys went to the physics lab? Now, one point you have to note here. He is asking me, how many boys have went to the physics lab? He is not asking me, how many, how many boys went to only physics lab? Okay, he is not asking me this. Try to understand. How many boys went to physics lab? He is asking me. But here you see, 128 boys are there those who have went only to the physics lab that means these students these boys have not went to chemistry lab so here he is asking me total how many boys went to physics lab okay went to physics lab matlab how many students have went to physics lab matlab we have to include those students also those who have attended both the labs because even those students have attended physics lab yes or no so that means here okay so, out of uh, 128, okay, and 30. So, how much it will become? It will become 158. So, what is the answer for the first question? It is 158. So, 158 students have went to the physics lab, right? I hope you all have understood. Now, see here, uh, total number of, okay, students, those who went to both the labs are 120. Boys are 30 in that and remaining will be girls, right? So, out of this, how many are girls? 90 are girls, right? Now, let us move to the next question, okay? Let us move to the next question. So, I hope you all have understood this particular question till here. Let us move to the next question, right? So, here, okay, slightly I will rub the board here, dear students, okay? Okay, see here. So, this is also not needed. Right. So, now you see here. Okay. So, now you see here what he had told me. Okay. What he had told me that 600. Okay, so 600, okay, it's 8 by 7, 
okay 8 by 7 are nothing but what they are boys so so that some space will be left to me okay so that i am uh, writing it here okay sorry 8 by 15 i am sorry please correct it I am sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Right. So here it will become 15. Okay. So 40, 8 for the 32. Okay. That is 320. Boys are 320 and girls. Girls are nothing but 280. Right. So this I have already told you here. Now let us move to the next question. Okay. Right. So, what is the second question he has asked me? How many girls went to only physics lab? Okay, how many girls went to only physics lab? So, how many girls have went? So, we don't know, right? But we know one thing that total number of girls are 280. And you see, girls that have went only to the chemistry lab are 126. Both the labs are 90. Yes or no? So, suppose if we add them. Suppose if we add them. So, how much it will become? Okay, you see. So, how much it will become? Okay, 126 plus 90, it will become, okay, 216, right? So, 216. Now, see, 126 plus 90 is nothing but 216. So, these are the total number of girls that have went to chemistry lab and both the labs. Now, the remaining girls, so total 280 girls are there. From that remaining girls, whatever are there, so how much it will become, okay? So, here it will become 64. So, 64 girls. So, 64 is the answer. Right. So, how many girls are there here? Here it is 64. Right. So, I hope you have got the answer. Right. Now, let us move to the next question. Let us move to the next question. Right. So, here there is a another question given to me. Okay. Fine. So, we will just remove this part. Okay. Right. So, what he is asking me, total number of students went to physics lab, went to only physics lab, went to only physics lab is what percent of the total number of students, okay, in the college, okay. So, only physics lab, how many students have went? So, this is the sum, okay. So, that means he, when he is talking about uh, total students, so it includes what? Both boys and girls, right. So, 180 plus 64. So, how much it will become? 6 and 3, 9. 190, okay. 192, okay. 192 divided by 600 into 100. So, what you can do here is you just cancel this, okay. 6 3s are 18 and 6 2s. So, how much it will become? It will become 32 percent. So, 32 percent is present here, right. So, this is 32 percent here. So, that is nothing but option 2. That is your answer, right. 32 percent is the answer. Fine. I hope you have understood this question also and now let us move to the next question. So, in the next question what he has told me, uh, what is the number of girls went to chemistry lab only, okay. So, went to chemistry lab, see only, again here only is not there, okay, only is not mentioned here. If it was only then 126 would have been the answer, yes or no, but he is asking me what is the number of girls went to chemistry lab. So, how many girls have went to the chemistry lab? It is 126 okay plus 90 because both of them matlab, the girls those who went to chemistry lab are 126 plus 90 so how much it will become 216 so 216 will be the answer so for this 216 will be the answer for this particular question right 216 will be the answer for this particular question right so this is not the answer here okay <coughs> Right. So, this is about this particular part and now let us move to the last question. Okay. So, what is that question? Let us see. Right. So, what is this question here? So, he is asking me, so how many, what is the number, what is the total number of students went to, okay, only chemistry lab. Okay. This is the question that has been asked. So, how to solve this question? See here, boys plus girls, right. So, boys plus girls. First, let us calculate how many boys are there. 
okay so totally boys we know it is 320 and 128 plus 30 so how much it will become so it will become 158 so out of this 158 if you just subtract it then here you will get 2 and here it will become 11 and 11 minus 5 how much it will become it will become 6 162 so boys are 162 and he has asked me the total students so how much it will become it will become if you add both these values okay if you add both these values okay so 162 plus here it will become 288 so 288 will be the answer so 288 will be the answer for this particular question right students right so this was a question that had come in the SBI mains examination right so which is slightly different from the basic level okay slightly dif different from the basic level so you see that we discussed this question okay we discussed this question right we discussed this question and you see it was very simple right this is the basic question but the question that he has asked in that only he has made some changes right so uh, in SBI most of the time not always uh, most of the time uh, we do not get direct questions so sometimes they make us to think on the question right so this was one of the example and now what we will do is we will discuss okay in the next class in tomorrow's class we will discuss okay SBI previous year question only okay which was asked on three parameters this is on two parameters only right we will discuss a question which had come in the examination which was based on the three parameters right so uh, subscribe our channel so if you felt that you have learned something new here from me then please uh, like the video please tell me in the comment box how was the today's session so if you want me to continue solving previous year SBI question papers let me know in the comment box that's all for the day dear students have a nice day